University of Göttingen. For many, it was the mecca of modern mathematics. From here came great names such as Gauss, Riemann, among others. Among so many brilliant names, it is difficult to point to anyone in particular. But in the autumn of 1850, a young man enrolled in the course taught by Gauss himself. Later, this young man would make significant contributions to the theory of rings and redefine irrational numbers. His name, Richard Dedekind. In this video, we will tell his story in great detail. Our intention is to take you into history in an immersion that will make us smell the greater Göttingen and hear the voice of his masters through the corridors dusted by time. The Greatest Mathematicians of All Time Episode 7, Dedekind Julius Wilhelm Richard Dedekind was born on 6th October 1831 in Braunschweig, Duchy of Braunschweig, now Germany, and died on 12 February 1916 in the same city. Richard Dedekind's father was a professor at the Collegium Carolinum in Brunswick. His mother was the daughter of a professor who also worked at the Collegium Carolinum. Richard was the youngest of four children and never married. He would live with one of his sisters who also remained single for most of his adult life. He attended school in Brunswick from the age of seven, and at this stage mathematics was not his main interest. The school, Martino Catharinum, was good, and Dedekind studied science, in particular physics and chemistry. However, physics became less than satisfactory to Dedekind, with what he considered an imprecise logical structure, and his attention turned to mathematics. The Collegium Carolinum was an educational institution between a secondary school and a university, and he entered it in 1848 at the age of 16. There, he would receive a good understanding of basic mathematics studying differential and integral calculus, analytic geometry, and the fundamentals of analysis. He entered the University of Gortingen in the spring of 1850 with a strong background in mathematics. Gortingen was a somewhat disappointing place to study mathematics at that time, and it had not yet become the vigorous research center it became soon after. Mathematics was directed by M. A. Stern and G. Ulrich. Gauss also taught mathematics courses, but mostly at the elementary level. The physics department was headed by Listing and Wilhelm Weber. The two departments came together to start a seminar that Dedekind attended from the beginning. There he learned number theory, which was the most advanced material he studied. His other courses covered materials such as differential and integral calculus, which he already had a good understanding of. The first course that really excited Dedekind was, surprisingly, a course in experimental physics taught by Weber. More likely, it was Weber who inspired Dedekind, rather than the topic of the course. In the autumn semester of 1850, Dedekind attended his first course taught by Gauss, it was a course on least squares, and according to K. R. R. Biermann in Biography in Dictionary of Scientific Biographies, 50 years later, Dedekind remembered the lectures as the most beautiful he had ever heard, writing that he followed Gauss with increasing interest and that he could not forget the experience. Dedekind did his doctoral work in four semesters under Gauss's supervision and presented a thesis on the theory of Eulerian integrals. He received his doctorate at Goddington in 1852 and would be Gauss's last student. However, he was not well trained in advanced mathematics and fully realized the shortcomings in his mathematics education. At this time, Berlin was the place where courses were given on the latest mathematical developments, but Dedekind was unable to learn this material in Goddington. At this time, Riemann was also in Goddington and he also discovered that mathematics education was aimed at students who intended to become high school teachers, not those with the best skills who would pursue research careers. 
Dedekind therefore spent the two years following the award of his doctorate learning the latest mathematical developments and working towards his habilitation. In 1854, both Riemann and Dedekind received their habilitations within weeks of each other. Dedekind then qualified as a university professor and began teaching in Gottingen, giving courses on probability and geometry. Gallus died in 1855, and de Richelieu was appointed to fill the vacant seat at Gottingen. This was an extremely important event for Dedekind, who found working with de Richelieu extremely lucrative. He attended de Richelieu's courses on number theory, potential theory, definite integrals, and partial differential equations. Dedekind and de Richelieu soon became close friends, and the relationship, in many ways, was the formation of Dedekind, who his mathematical interests gained a new lease of life from the discussions between the two. Bachmann, who was a student at Göttingen at the time, remembered years later that he only knew Dedekind by sight because Dedekind always came and went with Dirschlet and was completely eclipsed by him. Dedekind wrote in a letter in July 1856, What is most useful to me is the almost daily contact with Dirschlet, from whom I am beginning to learn in earnest for the first time. He is always completely kind to me and bluntly tells me what gaps I need to fill, while also giving me the instructions and the means to do so. I thank you in advance for infinite things, and no doubt there will be many more. Dedekind certainly still continued to learn mathematics at this time as a student would, when attending courses such as Riemann's on abelian functions and elliptic functions. Around this time, Dedekind studied Galois' work and was the first to lecture on Galois' theory when he taught a course on the topic at Göttingen during this period. While in Göttingen, Dedekind applied for J. L. Robbie's chair at the Zurich Polytechnic. Dirschlet substantiated his candidacy by writing that Dedekind was an exceptional pedagogue. In the spring of 1858, the Swiss counselor who made the appointments came to Göttingen and Dedekind was quickly chosen for the post. Dedekind was appointed to the Zurich Polytechnic and began teaching there in the autumn of 1858. In fact, it was while he was thinking about how to teach differential and integral calculus the first time he taught the topic that the idea of a Dedekind cut came to mind. He says that the idea occurred to him on November 24, 1858. His idea was that every number real divides rational numbers into two subsets, i.e., those larger than those smaller want. Dedekind's brilliant idea was to represent the real numbers by such divisions of the rationals. Dedekind and Riemann traveled together to Berlin in September 1859 on the occasion of Riemann's election to the Berlin Academy of Sciences. In Berlin, Dedekind met Weierstrass, Kummer, Borchardt, and Kronecker. The Collegium Carolinum in Brunswick was promoted to Brunswick Polytechnic in the 1860s, and Dedekind was appointed to the Polytechnic in 1862. With this appointment, he returned to his hometown and even to his old educational establishment, where his father had been one of the senior administrators for many years. Dedekind remained there for the rest of his life, retiring on April 1, 1894. He lived his life as a teacher in Brunswick, in close association with his brother and sister, ignoring all possibilities of change or of attaining a higher sphere of activity. The small familiar world in which he lived fully satisfied his demands. In it, his relatives completely replaced his wife and children, and there he found enough time and freedom for scientific work in basic mathematical research. He did not feel pressured to have a more marked impact on the outside world. Such self-confidence was unnecessary. After retiring, Dedekin continued to teach occasional courses and remained in good health during his long retirement. The only period of ill health that Dedekind experienced was ten years after his appointment to Brunswick Polytechnic, when he became seriously ill shortly after his father's death. However, he made a full recovery and, as we mentioned, remained in good health. Dedekind made a number of highly significant contributions to mathematics, and his work would change the style of mathematics to what is familiar to us today. One notable work was his redefinition of irrational numbers in terms of Dedekind cuts, 
which, as we mentioned above, were first presented to him in 1858. He published this in Continuity and Irrational Numbers in 1872. In it, he wrote, Now in each case, when there's a cut that's not produced by any rational number, then we create a new irrational number A, which we consider to be completely defined by that cut. We'll say that this number A corresponds to this cut, or that it produces this cut. In addition to his analysis of the nature of numbers, his work on mathematical induction, including the definition of finite and infinite sets, and his work on number theory, particularly on algebraic number fields, are of great importance. Devikin loved to spend holidays in Switzerland, in the Austrian Tyrol, or in the Black Forest in southern Germany. On one of these vacations in 1874, he met Cantor while in the beautiful town of Interlaken and the two discussed set theory. Dedekind was sympathetic to Cantor's theory of sets, as illustrated by this quote from What Are Numbers and What Will Be, 1888, on how to determine whether a given element belongs to a given set. How the determination takes place, or whether we know how to determine it, is an irrelevant question to what follows. The general laws that must be developed do not depend on this. In this quote, Dedekind argues against Kronecker's objections to infinity, and thus agrees with Cantor's views. Among Dedekind's other notable contributions to mathematics are his editions of the complete works of Peter Dirichlet, Carl Gauss, and Jörg Riemann. Dedekind's study of Dirichlet's work led, in fact, to his own study of algebraic number fields, as well as to his introduction of ideals. Dedekind edited Dirichlet's lectures on number theory, and published them as Lectures on Number Theory in 1863. While the book is certainly based on Dirichlet's lectures, and although Dedekind himself referred to the book throughout his life as being by Dirichlet, the book itself was entirely written by Dedekind, largely after Dirichlet's death. It was in the third and fourth editions of the Lectures on Number Theory, published in 1879 and 1894, that Dedekind wrote supplements in which he introduced the notion of an ideal which is fundamental to ring theory. Dedekind formulated his theory on the ring of integers of an algebraic number field. The general term ring does not appear. It was introduced later by Hilbert. Dedekind, in a joint paper with Heinrich Weber, published in 1882, applies his theory of ideals to Riemann's theory of surfaces, this gave powerful results, such as a purely algebraic proof of the Riemann-Roch theorem. Dedekind's work was quickly accepted, partly because of the clarity with which he presented his ideas and partly because Heinrich Weber lectured Hilbert on these topics at the University of Konigsberg. Dedekind's notion of the ideal was adopted and extended by Hilbert and then by Emmy Noether. This led to the single factorization of integers into prime powers to be generalized to ideals into other rings. In 1879, Dedekind published On the Theory of Algebraic Integers, which would once again have a major influence on the foundations of mathematics. In the book Dedekind, he presented a logical theory of numbers and complete induction expounded his main conception of the essence of arithmetic and addressed the role of the complete system of real numbers in geometry in the problem of the continuity of space. Among other things, he provides an independent definition of the concept of number for the infinity or finiteness of a set, using the concept of mapping and treating the recursive definition so important to ordinal number theory. Dedekind's brilliance did not consist solely in the theorems and concepts he studied, but because of his ability to formulate and express his ideas so clearly, he introduced a new style of mathematics that has been a major influence on mathematicians ever since. As H. M. Edwards in Dedekind's Invention of Ideals writes, Dedekind's legacy 
It consisted not only of important theorems, examples, and concepts, but of a whole style of mathematics that has been an inspiration to every succeeding generation. Many honors were bestowed on Dedekind for his exceptional work, although he always remained extraordinarily modest about his own abilities and accomplishments. He was elected to the Academy of Göttingen in 1862, the Academy of Berlin in 1880, the Academy of Rome, the Academy Leopoldino Carolini Naturae Curiosorum, and the Académie des Sciences de Paris in 1900. Honorary doctorates have been awarded to him by the universities of Christiania, Oslo, Zurich, and Brunswick. Richard Dedekin died of natural causes on February 12, 1916, at his home in Brunswick, Germany, at the age of 84, and was buried in the cemetery of Hauptfriedhof Brunswick. Richard Dedekin didn't get rich, he didn't seek fame, but his ideas crossed time and shaped all the mathematics we know today. He reminds us that the greatest revolutionaries are not always immediately remembered, but their contribution remains eternal. If this story inspired you, leave your like and subscribe to the channel, because we still have many other forgotten geniuses waiting to be rediscovered, and I want to share them all with you.